All right, we're going to call the meeting to order. Is there anyone listening by phone? Yes, Charlene Crossman. Okay, thank you. Uh, Judy Bickford. Coming. Pardon me? I'm here, Bob. Judy Bickford. Okay, thanks, Judy. Are there any changes or additions, Dan? No, there are not. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, approve the minutes. Number one, approve the minutes of August 17th, 2020. So Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion is passed. Number two, approve the minutes of August 18th, 2020. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion on those? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's passed. The minutes of August 31st, 2020. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is passed. <laughs> Next, community concerns. Do we have any community concerns other than what's on the agenda here? Seeing none. Uh, number one, discuss the waiver for noise ordinance for Lost Nation. Alan, Hello. how are you, sir? Thank you for this opportunity. Um, in July, we agreed to expand our outdoor seating area. Uh, last year, we made our original space with the new seating requirements. We had space to cut our capacity to 10. So we expanded the new space uh, for the for Route 100, um, fit the whole thing in, and we're now back to roughly our same capacity. What else we did though was we built a small stage in the, in the new space. So, in looking through the town noise ordinance to make sure that Anthony did do the compliance, um, I did notice that, uh, and then confirmed with Dan, there, the noise ordinance basically expands 24 hours a day. There's no, uh, you know, if you're playing a guitar in the middle of a two o'clock in the afternoon, you can call and do it. So, we're hoping to do uh, four college, five concerts on um, the next five Fridays. Um, Starting at about 8.30, wrapping up at about 10.30. Uh, so when it came to speak with you guys to see, I uh, reached out to uh, Bruce Marlin, and we kind of came to the point where it might be the best idea uh, for me to come in front of the board and request a, uh, a noise ordinance variance um, till 10.30, 11 o'clock. Um, we basically plan on wrapping everything up at 11 o'clock. I mean, back at 10.30. Sometimes the notes might linger a little bit longer, um, so 11 would be would be great, and uh, we're going to go through a perfect poll in the second week in October. And if it works and stints, we'll hopefully do it again next year. And if we do a bunch of things, it doesn't stick, then we'll do something else with the stage as well. And what is so, the capacity there, Alan? Uh, the capacity we feel we have uh, both out right now that we have eight, uh, I'm sorry, 10 tables of eight people uh, all separated out. Those are basically pots. So what we're asking people to do is you buy it the table because we couldn't figure out a way to separate people individually and sell individual tickets. So one person one person purchases the table and they bring seven of their friends within their pod in theory, and then they're really separated and we've got one, two, three, four, one right there. Um, and again, we're looking to do this on Fridays, uh, right up to uh, the second of October as well, um, potentially the ninth. Richard, what do you have for comments on that? Um, yeah, we can have an ongoing dialogue with Alan, and I think we'll try it, see what happens. The only issue would be across the uh, truck room for the neighborhood, I think, uh, maybe uh, longer time. Other than that, I don't, it's, it's hard to tell what it's going to be in the uh, You know, each individual space is on its own, so, but I know we have a good dialogue. What do you guys think? Which way is the van facing out? You got to touch the Okay. Yeah. Awesome. That was my only concern. If this music's directed the right way, I think it's going to be metal. I've seen it bouncing out over there. I think the noise coming back to water out is going to be metal. So, and and now I'm going to get the, a good number of the community as far as taking care of the neighbor's feet. So. If I one, uh, this Friday night is the first one we're doing to be a bluegrass band, so it will be amplified, but it's not. The feedback turned down, I don't know. 
Pharaoh's property east and west that are believed to half an acre of land, the original structure of it. Yes, and they have And so anyway, our initial interest in this was when we went to the, the zoning board, the planning board, the planning board, I guess, supports us, and so does Todd. Uh, they have a duplex right on the front of the highway there that they're converting into a duplex. And I guess because of the current zoning regulation, there's a postage stamp house being erected right in the backyard, as well as the duplex right by the grocery. You know, that. and you have grandchildren that have uh, a trampoline. So if that house is built, in, I think those kids, the grandchildren, will be able to jump up and down. And when they jump off and that, they'll be able to rest through the window of that new house. That's how close it is going to be. So I think it's ridiculous. And uh, my pitch now is for equity and equality. And we have a need for that, as you know, in the current day. We don't have a lot of it, we should. And so why does Jersey Way have low density and they can put up and get a half acre lot? And why do we have a rule for medium density where they can throw up all these posted same places. And there's more than one besides this duplex. On the corner of the other side is two houses on posted stamps. And I'm not sure about the egress to uh, get out on the highway, which is very dangerous. And I think my friend Dennis will speak to that uh, because he knows a lot about rules and regulations and articles and so forth. He says, the wonder people don't even get smashed up going out of, out of my driveway or his drive. Well, anyway, I think I've talked enough on retired school administrators and everybody gets sick of just anyway. So I remember, I remember. maybe Dennis or my wife can say something. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Can you identify yourself, please? Everyone hides behind their mask when I. I don't know why they do I appreciate the identification. Anyway, I think it's pretty clear that this is what we want. We're all here. Okay? We want those off. We want low impact. Don't burn anyone. Anyone else? We're all here. You don't want to be your best. I just want to stand up that. That's why I'm here as well. I'm making myself a business. We don't want it all chopped out. It's a beautiful neighborhood. Sadly, it's a few burgers to be in. The little kids are playing around, you know, family. Nice. So we'll just leave it all. It was never going to Would you go over what we are, the zoning hearing is about tonight? The area. Car parking on us. That's you, the neighbors are going after you guys because it's a little, little last time right. going in front of you. Uh, Logan Mayor Brian Collins are approved the zoning change presented, except for the favorite park, except for fire processing the village, and no down zoning favorite parkway, accepted by our motion carry four to zero. So that's what they're going after you for. This is not right. part that's of tonight's zoning. I kind change. of felt like I was missing something because. Fairwood Parkway East and West is not what we're talking about tonight, really. No. 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 Part of the problem is that we were concerned greatly that this wasn't carried the last time. The residents were concerned. We thought it was a done deal and would be marked low density, and it's not. And the neighborhood does go through cycles. When we first got there in the mid 90s, there were a lot of oxygenarians. It's rolled twice since then. Young kids are back. As, as Danny said, the houses are being fixed up again. It's a beautiful neighborhood. If it gets chopped up and it's a low de and to medium density, that's a problem. That's a real problem. It's a problem for the value of the existing homeowners, and it's a big problem for the quality of the neighborhood and the fact that the children can play on these pretty large spaces. It's a big problem. And we're, we, I mean, why did it change four years ago? We thought that. We were going to carry low density, just like Jersey Heights. Why did we not stay low density? Thanks. That's a problem. Okay, so, could there be an answer to that question? 
Well, that's something that's talked about with the planning, the planning board. Do you want to talk about that, Todd? Uh, Can you repeat the question, Shannon? Well, I was just wondering why Peter's question was about the Indian 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 so if you're trying to lobby the select board, again, it's important to us, even though this isn't this zoning change, it's the 2021 zoning change. I'm sure they won't forget a full room off of them. Right. But the question was, again, then why did the select board not approve that four years ago? What, what, what was it in your mind that led you to not approve the simple request from all the people who were there? <clears throat> well, we did pass the zoning to, to make it bigger. No, unless it's not bigger. To expand it, to expand it. It's always, it was low density before, was it not? No, it's always been medium density. Always been medium density. The proposal was a change to low density and that got voted down. When did it change to medium density? It's always been medium density. It's always been medium density, as long as I remember. Yeah, the proposal last time downloaded the low, and that, didn't, that past planning didn't pass the proposal. I see. I think there's this confusion about what it is and what it used to be, and that it hasn't changed. No, we have been listening to what all you folks have said for the past several years, and I appreciate you guys are all here. It's great to get the message out. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, I'm confused because you said the planning board did approve the change to low density. Correct. And the select board did not approve it. Correct. That's correct. And now the question is to the select board, why did you not approve it? We left it the way it was. We decided not to make why? a change. Why? 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 Because we didn't think it needed to be changed. Why? We didn't feel like it needed to be changed. So why would we have the place Jersey Way over there that has low density? We don't have it. That's unfair. Well, it's it's apples and oranges. You know, why? you know a good analogy I have is Congress Street and Maple Street. Congress Street is high density, but Maple Street is medium density. There are more units on Maple Street than are on Congress Street. That's the way it's always been. It's, just, it's very hard to go street by street and compare across town or down the street. We just left the way it was. We didn't make a change. Andy, Lawyer, Carolyn, Mark, Andy. Go ahead. We all came to the and we wanted that change. And you ignored it, basically. We're asking you to look at it and change it. It's good to have more people in the room to, to express their opinion, for sure. We um, we take a look at what how the community is growing, the economic growth, the the people looking for houses, the, our developers that come in and want to want to uh, make some more lots. You know, some it doesn't make sense. Like I agree with you, Dick. That that one on the corner there, there's like two houses right beside each other. You know, I wasn't aware there was a house going behind that other duplex behind the roaches. I wasn't aware of that. Graham, go ahead. Graham, Graham, I just wanted to say, you know, developers are brought up. My, I, my personal feeling is that, you know, given the neighborhood and their desires that, you know, the changing this to low density residential would not, you know, negatively impact it. You know, a lot of those are single family houses. MDR is, you know, is. It's a restricted, there's restricted development in MDR anyway from a developer standpoint. So I would support a change for the LDR in this region. I, region. I don't know if, you know, I know it changes timing and things like that, but rewarding if there was going to be a, a change made. But I just wanted to kind of make a statement that, you know, as, you know, a person that has interest in Morrisville that I support the, you know, changing of this area to low density makes a lot of sense. For specifics as to how you might do this with the select board, um, I would hate to. We're at the end of the zoning change process here. I hate to get the shoots and ladders and get go back to hit the hit the shoot and go back to go and start again for this. The planning council, as of last month, came up to have already agreed to support the zoning change again to you as part of next year's zoning change. So uh, maybe the discussion will be to direct the planning council to do that. The planning council. I don't want to speak for the board. There's the majority of the board here. I think they have no problem making that change. If you want to do that, I'm not sure you want to. Dennis. My name is Dennis Pinkmario. I live on the corner of Hillman Park Way West. I'm the one with the vision of fishing dollars and ways to scale everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right here. Uh, let's see the uh, I think, I know, listening to people, 
I understand that race is only changed to talk about tonight, but I think the board has got a good strong feeling that the next time this comes about, what direction you may want to go. You know, because a year from now, might be something else going on. We can't get as many people here. But this way, keep this in your memory that when this no man comes before you guys and ladies on the people that are in this room tonight. Well, I, I do recall that the night that we voted to not make any changes, all you people weren't in the room because we wouldn't agree. We wouldn't have done it had we heard. I didn't know anything about it. Yeah. I, I don't know enough about the process. No, 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 no. We, the yeah. we came to the zoning meeting and thought that that was the resolution. I mean, had we been told, well, you need to show up at the select board meeting, we all would have done it. But I still heard everybody in this room. It's important whenever we last meeting. We did not know that. No, uh, we were not warned. And we were not advised at that meeting that we needed to come back. Either. Two things. Why would it say? That's the way it's due process. It takes takes a while. Yeah, on, on. Yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Nobody has an idea. Like it's very difficult to believe. Sorry. What gets sent out for notification? I don't want the select board hearings. I want my hearings. Oh, so, for example, yeah. tonight, since there is a one hearing tonight, the select board by statute can't vote tonight. They have to vote the next regular meeting. So, you're here comments tonight, but this zoning change won't be voted on until two weeks from last night. So, there'll be another meeting about this that's under state statute two weeks from last night. So we need to show up for that. We need to be at that meeting. You may want to be. Yeah. The cut to the chase here. Go ahead, Dick. Uh, you know what I'd love to have a commitment individually by a board member here tonight that they would support the low density. I'd like you to be able to stand up and say we'll support low density. However, you're leaving us no recourse except to go to the ballot. And that's where we are. And during COVID time. Process certainly makes it more difficult, especially during COVID. Absolutely, Brian, you have you have a comment. Well, I just want to say, I know you keep asking why we did it, why we did it. I'll tell you why I did it. Because you've lived there how many years the way it is, and uh, you weren't here. I, I don't know why you weren't here. It's not up to me to figure out what it was. Was I thought it was doing the right thing by keeping it the way you are. Now. But we aren't changing anything. You're you're. Your property and stuff right now is the same as this. I'm all for going the other way. Right. Okay, now that we know, we didn't know. But what brought us here was the little cake next to Richard's house on the corner where they wanted to put something, was it nine units in? Aren't you supposed to have two parking spaces per unit? That thing is a postage stamp and it's wetland behind it. I think half this driveway is on Richard's lawn. I mean, are you serious? How on earth do we not come in and go, really? Nine years? So the case. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. Is it possible? Is it possible for these changes to be It's obviously, you know, there was some miscommunication, right? Correct? Sounds like it. Yep. So is it possible to have you know, a little bit how much and where not the line to wait for us to come to 10 more meetings. Maybe on this year. I know I know from my own personal um opinion, my grandparents lived on Elmore Street forever where Steve Leach lives, you know, that's still called the Beeman lot out there. And um, I grew up there. I grew up with Miller's, Fairwood Parkway West, you know. I would totally support you folks that live right there. You know, I, I actually wasn't in town when we had the last zoning meeting. I was over in Europe, so I didn't vote that night. I wasn't present, but 
overwhelmingly we can see you guys in a room and we're not going to say, oh no, we're going to, we're going to vote, you know, defy what you guys want. You know, if I live there, I'd feel the same way, I'm sure. So, but I, I do also have, um, I think about the, our developers that, that can look at some lots that, that it's not a posted stamp and you can develop it. You know, there's, there's a lot of places in town where there is that capability, but you know, I certainly respect where you guys live, how you got it set up. I, I love that neighborhood. I always have. So that's my opinion. Well, now, just the medium density has always been It's always been medium density. But the size of the medium density, no, is uh, cheap. Correct? Correct? Yeah. I think it, I, the duplex went higher. Not a lot. Yeah, the duplex went slightly higher in a single family home lot. So we can call it because that's really high. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, on the select board, but we we generally side with the planning council. Not always, you know, not always, but you know, the planning council does the load of the work. They put in a lot of thought to it. They put in a lot of time. And um, we generally go with, with what they bring us, you know, they explain their reasoning and we usually do it. Not set in stone. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a thankless job, I can tell you that. And I can see by you guys sitting there, you know, I, I know all you people that have lived there for a long time, you know. I agree with it. Go ahead, ma'am. Hi, I'm still Bob. I don't want to throw the um, Anything more concerning? We've only been there a few years. We've got a lot that we now know that we can split up. We don't plan on doing that. But there's a lot of other people in the neighborhood that are older people that have been selling the property. They could be passing away. They're too left out. Well, as, as the community grows, people are looking for more lots to build on. 
you know, and that's why it is important for for the town to set the zoning so it can't get over infiltrated. Exactly what medium residential means is a big deal. Well, like 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 I said, Maple Street is medium density, and you can see all those houses all along the right hand side. You know, I mean that's the fire issue too. Oh, yeah. uh, both sides of the street are really very close. Right. Yeah, or Harrison Avenue, or you know your. Seventy years ago, that development, medium density, meant a half an acre, perhaps. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. So if, if the, the criteria has changed, the neighborhood has changed, the criteria has changed, and it was never designed for that. Right. It's never intended to be that way. No. I remember buying that, that house, and I was going to buy it from plug. And okay. some, some entirely deaf. Yep. Uh, he came off the house, my husband and I were renting it, and he took a handshake over the picnic table out front. He said, you want to buy the house? We said, sure. He gave us a price, we shook on it. He went home. We were going to get together in the next couple of weeks. Well, he died. His brother shows up from New Jersey and he looks at me and he goes, No, no. He goes, That's just the house. He goes, You want to buy the front yard? It's twice that amount. <laughs> I said, Well, I'm not buying the house without the yard. <laughs> so, can I just say? Go ahead. So, I was going to have the Zoom canal, but instead, I got on with the Memorial South Supervisory Union School Board. <laughs> Which was better? So when we get 200 people at board meetings, 200, 500 people signing petitions, and as board members, we have to just stand up and say what we believe in and what's right. And we're trying to bring people who have authoritarian dictatorship just under control. And we've done it. So anyway, just back to my original proposal, is there any of these board members that are willing, willing to stand up right now and say we will push low density. Well, right now? You're looking at me, Zach. I'm Eric Dodge. I'm going to say that you folks are going to say that. One of my students, right? Yeah, I won't come here. I do get from the Board of Education across my back foot and then behind my back foot. I am. Yeah. 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 I know. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and as much as short-term, short-term impact and negatively affect the long-term plan. So we don't always understand how it can, we can. We're going to go up. We're going to be advised about changes tonight, take input, and the next meeting, hope the changes in. And we know that our zoning team, our, our uh, planning team, they hear from the public too. So there's, there's public input in three different venues, uh, three different meetings. By the time it comes to our to the board here, we may not know every in and out, every one of these changes, or how it may negatively impact long range. This has an impact because you're here. You're talking about a, a, a thousand years worth of residency in that neighborhood. So it has a huge impact. I'm all for a low density up here. There's no issue. That is a huge neighborhood. Thank you. I can tell you four years ago, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, we didn't have duplex on the floor. We didn't we didn't have that kind of development going on up there. I can remember thinking if if there's nothing happening, nothing wrong with medium density, then we didn't need density. I did not understand that that meant four years later we would have all these cut-offs. I just didn't know the implications. Well, thank you. I appreciate yep. that. And the thank you board for the honesty of your much more coherent and straight up and truthful. Etienne, did you did you have a comment? Uh, I'm afraid I don't. You don't. I did the case. I honestly, it's been a couple of years since that whole situation happened. Right. Uh, details, I think, you might have been before. I don't really remember how how it even came up. Because of the case on the court. Well, we the the. the somebody comes shelter for it. It was the cake on the corner, and then uh, Shauna from uh, Alliance looking at uh, the Yeah. Well, the first big one visually was the Shanley's brick house that turned into yeah. townhouses. That was that was the yeah. first one in my mind. I went, wow. Needless to say, the first lap out of town, and then all the stuff was Street gets rolled into whatever showed up, and all the way to the house. Oh, I wasn't your student, but I just wouldn't stand up, and I'm not going to stand up, but I figure I am, but I would support this group the way it's going tonight, to put low dead, keep it low dead, or switch it to low dead. I don't know whether we want to do it. I'm going to talk to Todd about that. I know you want it done now, fast, but I don't know what that means about what's here. We can't pass it, I think, but, but I'm behind you. Go ahead. Oh, I hope you haven't given me a chance to say anything. You know, I'm waiting. <laughs> Are you really? Yeah. Good. Yeah, I'm here now. I'm not on the select board. I was on the board when it was voted on before, but I have been chair of the development review board for over 30 years. And I didn't go to your school today, but I think you I think you know my mother pretty well, Carolyn Nolan. Good. Amen. And. Uh, I'm all in favor of maintaining, you know, keeping changing the low density residential up there. Uh, like I said, I got I wear two hats here, the DRP chair, and I'm also on the select board, of which I'm very proud to be on. Uh, I managed to get enough votes to get here. It kept me out of legislature, but that's all right. this, is, this is easier. But uh, no, I'm in favor of it, and. Uh, you know, 10 minutes ago, I was trying to ask Todd, uh, is there any avenue available that we can put this on this agenda, or does it have yeah, to be really set it, back? It, the shoots and ladders uh, the analogy I gave you a minute ago, you start all the way over. What's easy to do, what you've done in the past, is direct the planning council to make the change, which they've done before, and it's the planning council from talking about this with the same neighbors. Lots of months of support. So you're asking to do something I want to do anyway. I think it'd be helpful if we had all your names and emails. We could email you guys yeah. for the meetings that's important to be at. We we got the message, but Judy, can I say something? We got our fifth select board member. But she hasn't chimed in. Yep, I'm here. Um, I'm for low density housing, and I'm. 
what I'm confused about is this isn't what we're supposed to be talking about tonight. Is that correct? It's not. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. So just a discussion for us to be talking about in the future, sometime down the okay. road. So you're okay. in support of it also. Oh yeah, I, I'm I'm for low density housing, especially in the areas we're talking about. Uh, oh, I do. Okay. Is there any other comment? Can I say something? I'm. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Who is it? This is Pat Thompson. I live um, on uh, Payne Avenue. I just yeah. want to know. I don't want it to be put off any longer than it has to because. I think we all in good faith thought that we had solved this problem a few years ago. So I would like to know what a timeline is. And if you're going to make a list of people to show up or, or to speak or whatever, I would like to be put on that list. But I don't want it to just be put off for some time down the road. I think we need an answer as soon as you are able to do something. So, yeah, the planning council is, changes the zoning once a year. I've already got a zoning change list for 2021 going. This is number one on that list. I've already made it uh, on the paper. Um, normally, like this year, we warned the zoning change at the end of February. I think our hearing was March 28th, and that got delayed because of COVID, and that's why we're so delayed here, because we didn't hold a public meeting for a couple months because of the, uh, the pandemic. So, in theory, it gets warned in February pretty much like I do every year. Which is generally before any developer is going to do anything on the ground. Uh, the planning council gets it in March. The select board generally gets it in May and through this year. That's kind of the standard process every year. And, and that's really as fast as you go statutorily with the warning period. So, uh, in 2020, because of the COVID, did that actually get passed? This, we're actually doing the 2020 right now. So, if they direct you to add that little bit to the 2020, can you do that? Yes, we can't do that tonight, no. No, but no, not tonight. Well, tonight is the is your zoning happening? Tonight is the select board hearing. This is the final hearing of the whole process. We're at the end of the process now, not the beginning of the process. So we can't do it tonight, but there's no reason to do it. I mean, I can guarantee you it's going to be part of the zoning change that we do uh, this winter. Really. Okay. I've already made the change. So we'll present those and then you can come. Winter. Yeah, with us or the law, and people developing and then developing properties now. Yeah, winter is the only thing I was expecting in that regard. So it's not going to happen. The property was to, to apply for a subdivision like 1014 Elmore Street, and theory they'd be developed, so they're going to be able to see their project as proposed. And you, the zoning process takes a few months to go through. You can't, you, even if I wanted to, I couldn't just start it tomorrow. Um, you can ask the top of the planning council chair. I want to speak to the board whether they want to undertake it immediately and do a separate zoning change just for that. It's generally not the problem that they do. But I, I feel even if I mean other town do we got not too far away. I'd be pretty confident that if my zoning change starts in February and March, I'm really nothing's gonna be developed on that one. February and March we're still shelving around. We we were taken by surprise though with what the reason we got it here first time. And I'm just wondering, is that going to happen again, where we find out that uh, there's a sale of a property and it's divided out again for houses and then it got through because we didn't know about it? How, how are we protected? Well, anyone that's within 100 feet of the property in question um, gets alerted as well as people are hearing. So, I mean, I got, I think half the neighborhood in this room has my personal cell phone number, my email. You guys contacted me quite liberally during 10 or the Elmore Street. I notified you in the middle. So something does happen. Anyone, I, I notify in writing a letter to anyone in the neighborhood uh, that's anywhere close to me. So if something were to happen, you would be notified. The likelihood of that happening before February is pretty small. The construction season is over, but current season is pretty much over. I've done a couple of furnaces, so you can just not pretty much anymore. Dennis. I don't want to sound like an asshole, but don't sell you property. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, nope. <laughs> that hurt Denise's feelings. Except the truth that our house is on the market. Well, and that's the problem is that you get a, you didn't want to sell your house. I mean, you know, somebody that has a certain property where they know that they can subdivide it. They can subdivide it without selling the house. 
quite a few of those that are responsibilities in our neighborhood. The real turned around and shaking her head. Okay, does anyone have any other comments about this? Yeah, I say I want to say something. Ma'am, go ahead. I, I just wanted to, I would love to name that. My name's Sarah Marriott. This is Charlene Crossman. Hello, Sarah. Huh? I'm, we're listening to a woman that's in the room here first. Go ahead. Um, anyway, I just wanted to extend my thanks for you guys for taking the time out of this meeting, as it wasn't necessarily on the agenda for today. And I just wanted to think about it. But the neighborhood was really concerned. And, myself as well, you know, I, like I said, I've got small kids, there's a lot of small kids in the area, and it's just really nice to have their space to be able to go and walk up the street and go to so-and-so's house, and we just hope that it can stay that way, so, and I know everybody's got busy schedules and things to do, and probably don't want to talk about this anymore if that's what you're not here for, but I just wanted to make sure to say thank you for everyone for, for listening. Yeah, we appreciate I, everyone coming in. Perfect. Go ahead, ma'am, you're next. Okay, yeah, this is Sharon. Yeah. Go ahead. Are you talking? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, this is Charlene Crossman, and I just want to say that that I would like to see Fairwood Parkway go to low density, so at least there's some hope, even though the low density lot size is small enough to put two houses on a half an acre. It was my understanding that that if this area was low density that the board would not approve a subdivision because it would be low density. Right, if like it were low happened. density, that wouldn't happen. That's right. Huh? If it were low density, this would not happen. Right. You would not be doing a subdivide on the That's half right. acre. Because otherwise, a half acre is going to go in for two houses with medium density for anybody anybody that wants to put another house on the half acre is going to go in on medium density. And I would like to see it not to go in. We've got to have some places that got some land just because the lot size has gotten smaller and smaller and smaller over the years. That's what's happened. The lot size is so small. <laughs> you right. can put 40 million houses on a little piece of land. Bob, and, and I think, I think Bob. the only way to get around it is to go low density. Charlene, this is Todd speaking. A 20,000 square foot lot, so you have a half acre lot in, in, in the Fairwood Parkway neighborhood, even if it's pushed to low density, it's still subdividable. The minimum lot size in LDR is 10,000 square feet. 10,000 square feet is a good size lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's all I want to say. No and I vote. There's no duplexes allowed. There's no duplexes below density residential. There's no multi family allowed. So it's all single family homes, single family homes with a 10,000 square foot lot. And that's a and that's, lot size doesn't change for now. Right. Never change as far as that's long as that. Yeah, 20,000 is a half acre. Yep, uh, Grant Wheeler here, Fairwood Parkway West. Uh, I just want to say I stand in solidarity with my neighbors on this issue. Hey, thanks for the comment. I have, I have a question for you folks in the audience. Um, what's your opinion of um, the Pope Meadow development? What, what does everyone think about that? I thought it was the last field in town, and when that went down, I was so disappointed. Really? The last field in the village, really, for me. Well, that, that, was the, that was the thing that just made me feel really bad about having a major open space in the village. Just from growing up here, from being a kid here, and you know, running the fields, riding the bike, riding the horse, riding the horse on all those properties. Right. Right. I was curious. I was. I I saw it and thought it was sad at first, but I went to a lot of those units and it was done really tastefully. Well, and they're done well, and they and they separated them pretty much enough, and it, it is a planned development. And right. That's, the point. that's why I wondered what people thought. That's the point. I thought we've been here six years. Where I grew up, I would not Yep. 
foot traffic than than we ever have before. Right. From just you know, they're not just going down the sidewalk. There's no problem. Right. But it's definitely a lot more. Yeah, there's no sidewalks over there either. Yeah, Grant, really. Yeah, there is sidewalk. There's no sidewalks over where I'm knocking them down. Great Works Fireplace. Oh, no, no. We're talking about the Pope Middle Park. That's where they're going. They're making the loop. Right. But there's no sidewalks. Go ahead, ma'am. So, our opinion about it, too, is that there are some. Um, condos that are in there that are only by homeowners, and they tend to be people that are going to stay there more and they're homeowners. A lot of the other buildings there are rental, right. which could also be an issue and see a lot of turnover or a lot of space. You know, this is a, probably your main to be, you know, one of those situations. Um, our other concern is because we are in a situation where we have our houses and our families, our people out walking. Um, in addition to your opinion about that development, the development is fine, but the road is a very busy road. I don't think it's enforced well enough with the amount of traffic and the children and they're not trying to cross over, especially from Palmetto, we said the Derwin Parkway area. So I'd like to see that. You know, if we're going from a that's another concern about the uh, low density just now, you know, still in moderate density and there's not the Safety measures there, so Part of the issue with that is the fact that the speed would change it right as you come into the whole mm -hmm. middle area. Right. And one of the things that would be, you know, you talk to the chief uh, about that is if the speed limit changes a little farther up to give people who are flying down sand hills, it's very easy to do because down hills is very steep grade. The heads up, the, the, speed, the speed is going to change earlier. On the hill. So let's say that the, the 25 mile per hour starts before the demand area. Right. You know, that right? would be a state thing. That's not up to us. Well, but you can petition, can you not? We can, but it's not likely they're going to listen to what we, we say. No, there's also. Unfortunately. Even based on the speed alignment there, um, probably maybe half of them go 25, the rest of them are definitely not going to. Well, they let off the accelerator, but they're still going 40. It's a, it's a cash power to the job. I was going to say that our police chief is right in the room, and he lives right there, too. All right. Do we have any other comments about about this for the regular zoning? Any comments on the after the warrant? I think there's people here with comments on the after the you got a skateboard right <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was going to bring something up about um, trying to add to the zoning change for this year, but I think it's fairly clear that that's not going to happen. So I think I'm going to reconsider that request and, uh, and start the process to the Planning Commission when they start the 21, because it, uh, it's not going to change things for uh, Right. Take another bite of the apple. Yeah, we'll go through the process and uh, come back. I just want to tell everybody we, we appreciate you guys coming in and giving your feedback. You know, we do listen. It's not like we make decisions hastily or not thinking about it. A lot of times we may not have all the information or may not have the testimony from you folks that live right there. And um, you certainly can get a hold of. It. It's always a good idea to look for our agendas. You know, if you guys got something in your head, look for our agendas, and and we can make sure you guys been notified if these you know these important hearings are coming up. Um, this wasn't the hearing we were talking about tonight, but we get the message. Sure, I know that you want to get copies of agendas. Just email Erica. Come up to and we'll email you every agenda that we have. We email them all. So what do you think, Todd? The, like to just bring up and like the process is a bit frustrating in the in the sense that you could go to the you could go to the planning commission and the planning commission doesn't agree with your request. You know the the line is we'll go to the select board meeting to request a change. But then after this experience tonight, I can see that's clearly not something that's going to happen. So then you feel like you're just stuck in this rut of like getting thrown back and forth between the zoning the select board. I'm sorry and the 
and the planning commission. So it, there's a bit of a frustration there, you know, it causes a big concern. It's like you can't get the planning commission to agree with you, then it seems like the select board doesn't have the option to add or remove, or they can remove things that they can't add for the things you might request. You send people back to the board. Yeah, right. so they can get that around. So it gets a little question. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
like down here on the lower bridge, or upper bridge, down here by the original parking place. From the parking space to the yellow line is nine feet. That gives me six inches on each side of that trailer. It's a very delicate speed limit of 25 miles an hour. If somebody's coming at me, I'm going to move over. And that would mean with my own trailer. Even a plow truck with a 10 foot plow out there, I don't have enough room. And that doesn't even start to consider the wing that's going to come down on the side. Sorry, what Down here on Bridge Street, down by Low Beverage. So, are you proposing something or are you proposing a change? Well, I'm not proposing any changes. I'd like to leave it to the roads, the, the width of the app. Okay. Have any comments about it? Well, um, Good chance. the planning council was concerned that um, wider roads lead to excessive speed, among other things. And a village setting is just inappropriate. You mentioned Congress Street. I, I live off of Congress Street, and the enforcement of speeding. Uh, preventing people from speeding is uh, happens every eight weeks or so. Eight, one week when the speed car goes up. But other than that, there's a huge difference between a 25 mile an hour a car driving 25 miles an hour and a car that typically is doing 40 down to the tip. That's geriatric. That the street is. I don't. It, it doesn't have 12 foot wide lanes, but it's unstriped right now, so it sure feels like it. What we're really interested in is trying to ensure that, especially new developments which are occurring <clears throat> in areas of the village in particular, uh, or developed area, development areas for residential construction, that this is taken into account. We, we don't need lane mix that allow people to drive really fast to get to transit from one spot to the next because they will. And, um, there are, there are secondary reasons, of course, as well, which is just that wireless roads cost more, take more space, and they require bigger equipment. It's not just that we buy bigger equipment to service them, and requiring bigger equipment. So, for all of those reasons, <clears throat> we'd really like you to consider um, taking a different look at it and perhaps coming up with something that's more nuanced, depending on the location. Uh, for example, uh, maybe there's a good reason for a 12 foot lane width um, in certain commercial areas, uh, truck turning radius, for example. But we don't think it's a universal solution. I unfortunately wasn't present for the discussion where it was changed, where it wasn't voted on. Uh, so uh, that might be interesting to go back to right now as well. Yeah, it seems like a lot of our roads were were really um, limited because we we don't have a lot of space. If you've got a parking space on either side, you don't have a, a wide lane like you're talking about Congress Street. Congress Street, you, you generally do go a little faster if there's no cars parked along there, you know, because it seems like it's narrow. But um, one thing that has helped on Maple Street is that stop sign at East Olive, you know, Olive Street, and that's definitely made people drive slower. But um, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I know um, a lot of places in town, though, it seems like our roads are narrow anyway, and you can't go that fast. I don't know. Uh, I can't think of a place maybe other than Congress Street that's really, and it's not all that wide, it seems like to me, if there's I cars live, present. I live on the Goodbox area, yeah. and here, you don't really fast. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course, there's no lines or anything there. J Avenue. From what we've observed over the years, uh, in reading, you know, uh, policy studies by, by professionals in this area, you can rely on police to, to enforce the speed limit on a road that people tend to drive past on, uh, or you can design a road from the start to help prevent people from speeding. And, um, you know, that's one of my number one concerns personally. And it's one that I think you should address at the outset. New roads are going in to development in commercial locations. The town is going to be expanding. Uh, I, I think that we should at least have a discussion about having a more appropriate roadside size for the development in question. I don't think that we're advocating. 
advocating, I don't think that you're advocating widening Congress Street, for example. Right. Nor are we um, suggesting that you must have a nine foot mm -hmm. if you build, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, some sort of large commercial area that requires permits. And so that might not be or when we consider, you know, Main Street have an angle parking, which you don't have enough room there either, you know, with with equipment and and fire vehicles going by and plows and everything. Richard, what is your your take on this? We kind of always problem. Yeah, I mean, I think that
I don't know what they're thinking down there, but it's going to be really expensive. I've been to a couple meetings on that. And I, I'm not sure what people are going to do. Like the shopping centers, they're all going to, even if they're Act 250 approved or pre Act 250, you're still going to have to design a stormwater system. But my understanding is you're going to have to design a stormwater system. And most of the, the existing developments, where are you going to put one? Because it wasn't designed for that. So, with the new development, I, my feeling is you've got to keep everything as, as narrow as you can and keep the stormwater down because there's a huge, huge push to clean up these lakes and ponds and streams. And it's just the way it is. I mean, that would help. Farming cheaper to stop and do it. Yeah. yeah. And just point out two things. I'm going to become a friend for your own So, right now, the, the minimum road length that the town will accept is a new road is 1,000 foot length. So, you know, road 200 foot, even with back houses on it, would qualify as a town road. I and mean, I think, correct me if I'm wrong again, but there are different standards that roads that will make private roads. So, you know, right now, the road they're describing that's 200 feet length. You really wouldn't be eligible to pick up a town in the same way because the minimum length is a thousand feet. So, I mean, we're, we're not talking, you know, just small roads, we're talking a thousand feet in length. Um, the other thing, too, is, you know, just because it's narrower in the town, that doesn't necessarily qualify what piece of equipment we'll be using to maintain or where it's going to be on the route. So, you know, we have more tandem trucks, or not tandem, but single action tandem trucks out there plowing. Than we do pickup trucks and half cups. And those trucks, I think, are minimum, what was it, 10 feet on those? Way down? Yeah, you're looking at 13 feet. 13 feet. So once you get in there, and I know you know, it, it, it sounds great, but if your perspective when you have a plow and a wing on your truck is completely different than when you're just driving. And you're right, it does, it, it is a maintenance thing. Um, winter seems to get longer and we have more snow every year. It's not just the width of the truck, but the snow's coming off the edge of the truck too. You know, it, it's got to have some place to go. Um, you wouldn't leave the number of phone calls that I get every spring um, because people complain that we tear up their yards, even though it's in the right way. You know, their expectation is is that the plow is taking up their grass and putting out we're going to back out there and fix it. So you know, there's there's a Couple different sides because we're, we're adding more work on the gross crews all the time. They're trying to do more efficient with, with different and better equipment. It's good. But the, again, the other thing too is if a CDL driver or a truck driver, if he's over the center line and he hits something, it's his fault. So, you know, I, I didn't talk to the road crew in particular, but I asked Eric to go ways off to touch out with the road crew. So I think, you know, yeah, there has to be a maintenance consideration for the the, the roads that the town is going to take over. If we don't do that, then I don't think we're, we're doing the crews that are out there maintaining it um, the justice that we do deserve. That's my stance on it. Um, and we looked at this, we went to 18 foot lanes, and one road that we did look at that you know, was an 18 foot road was the one up on the BPS building. If you look at that one before, they said, I mean, that was way too narrow of a road for, you know. To maintain and eventually the town's going to maintain it becomes a town road forever. You know, it's in we get the stormwater too, it becomes part of the town infrastructure at that point in time. The, the state's getting tougher on all those things, and that's the other thing that you're going to have in these roads is more and more stormwater infrastructure that's going to have to be maintained and taken care of. So, um, I just think right now with, with the way that we have to take care of and maintain it. That the roads that we recommend or the policy that we have is a good policy overall. There's no perfect here, um, but overall, I believe it's a good policy. Right? We've manipulated over years a number of different times. Um, so I think we have to take into consideration how we maintain those roads and, and keep the, 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 the both our highway crews and the people that are using those roads, in particular in the winter, safe. So that's my opinion. Sir, you had a comment too. You were yeah. waiting. I mean, it's a compelling argument, like I understand it makes sense to it. Um, I think, especially with the West Bank, I'm still trying to explain how, and we 
planet kind of grows. Not cars and clouds. And granted, winter does get long. Mm -hmm. No end be grain is better than around all that cloud and chicken stuff. Um, but to have one stamp on every new road that goes into this town is going to be this way. I just be great about the other town. There should be a little more nuance in this situation. Especially in these developments that are being built. I mean, you heard everybody here talking, we want our kids to be able to play out the road. Some 18 year old's got 24 feet to spin his tires. Boy, if he can do it, he doesn't care how many uh, apartments are around. Um, and I study traffic concepts, I study form water, I like paper, I love paper. Damn, I hate the papers that can't take it. But I mean, they're an answer for all of that. I mean, the texture and color of papers is well been that. Papers can allow the storm water through. So my point is not to give me work, there are other answers. And, and traffic coming is a thing. I mean, Europeans have a big heavy toll on them because they're designing towns that are vibrant and easy to use um, and not getting bigger and bigger and bigger trucks. I mean, if you're in the Alps, you can take up snow and there's a lot of easy things. Uh, certainly, you know, it's, it's, I, I can't imagine the burden trying to get off this because with everything they need on each and every property, especially given budget, low manpower. But if we're talking about serving people, someone's going to buy a house that's going to be there. They're going to have kids. And I've seen questions watching people speed by on a you know, narrow road now. So I, I disagree fully with the sentiment that we can design our way into a safer way, which is for the town, not for the cloud driver. Eric, good comment. Yeah, I, I'm, the, the, town, I'm, the board's policy on roads does not stop a developer from building development because he doesn't got a road that's 27 feet wide that meeting our standards. They can build a narrow road, it just means that there, at no time will the town take that road over. It's for maintenance. Well, that's I mean, if I'm going to build a residential neighborhood with a small home there, and even if I have a thousand feet of, of road length to it, uh, do I want to? If, if, so the, the consideration is: Do I want to keep it safe with the roads narrow to keep the speed down, but the homeowners have to maintain that road, or do I build it to the town specs in order for the town to come in and take care of it with the risk of the speed going on? But and I mean, there are ways even on our village streets that exist that we can do visual uh, things. We've, we've tried that. We've done it here in the village already. But, um, Visual inhibitors of slow speeds. Uh, I actually, to, to jump off from that whole topic just to address the Congress Street issue, I would be inclined to look at the Cherry Avenue intersection, even though it's on the just little crest of the hill, as uh, a, a means for us to bring the stop sign to that intersection. I'm not saying it's a definite yes for me to do that, but I think it, we can look at that. That has been a continuous speed zone for years, typically around 7 a.m. Uh, so I, 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 we can address the issues that exist. But we're talking about future development, and our growth policy doesn't stop at all for the ability to develop. It just it's a consideration has to he or she has to make as to how do they want the town to take it over at some point. We've opened up our policy where uh, a couple of years ago it had to be a loop road that we would take. We changed that policy. We now have numerous roads that have come on board with our responsibility to maintain. They were built and developed years ago with a mindset that the town would come and take them over. The board way previous laws changed that, said, no, we're not taking it to that end. So they were on hold for a long time. We changed that back. <coughs> now we have a few more miles of road to plow, and not all of them will be plowed with dump trucks. We have a hard enough time keeping our plow truck fleet. We have made changes to the way we finance our trucks in order to keep them less time, keeping them less broken down and rotating that through. That changes made just last year in this current project. In order to keep our fleet of dump trucks, and that's not going to change. We have the same amount of roads that are increasing. I don't want to see us with a fleet of pickups because every pickup has a driver. We don't have enough staff to man all our dump trucks and all the pickups that we take. To continue to, to maintain all the new development roads that aren't wide enough to effectively put a 10 miles plus on the truck down or a single axle bump truck with a 10 foot tower. So I, I don't see that our current policy restricts 
development. It is the developer's choice whether or not they're going to build the road wide enough for the town to take over. Work well. uh, that's why I see kind of fun because we can't ignore the land. We can't ignore the weather, and uh, it's always going to be there. So I, I slide with our highway through. Uh, we have enough narrow spots as it is that uh, narrowing the roads up and the, the policy across the board should be a bad thing. Well, the other thing it makes me think of is uh, rescue ambulance and fire trucks and everything. You've got to have a certain width for those. But they're not getting any smaller. I, I travel in Europe all the time. I see lots of rescue vehicles and everything, and they're not getting any smaller. I don't care where you are. And you've got to have a certain road width, not just for highway. And not there's just so much to look at. You know, you got to look at everything before you make decisions like that. And we have gone there. Like Dan said, we have changed things and then changed back. We've changed a lot of things over the years that well 13 years living on and um you know we're we're still considering things you know but it's good to have have all the factors so we can make a good decision brian you had a comment Hi. that's what yeah. you just said yeah well the biggest house in my thoughts are we were talking about um, i drew i was on a fire department for 20 years and i'll tell you when you're flying down to quiet that extra room to get through sometimes is good I think, and uh, I'd hate to see it on. I'm not saying on the short roads that are being built from now on. I'm talking about, I heard Bridge Street, I heard Congress Street. I am so against trying to stick up in the middle of the road so that people slow down. Like the stop sign on Maple Street. Uh, how many times I drive up that street, stop, they're in a the car around. I get cleared the other end, I look back, and they're in a the car around. So I just think that. You got a few bad apples at speed. It's too bad we can't catch them and fix that. But I do think fire trucks, I was going to ask Denny to speak to that. Fire and rescue. Um, I just, I think it's not all one fits off. I think you do may, may need to, like you said, if it's a private road, let them do, when they're asking us to take it over, it's going to change. My thought. Yeah, there's a lot of considerations. Well, one other thing. To me, it seems like nowadays, when you go out and you see these new roads going, like from Marshall to Stowe right now, you see how they kind of, they give you a little extra room in case some accident happens, like somebody's trying to pass somebody and they didn't quite make it, gives you a little room to move over. You know, not that we hope that happens in the village, but you've got this guy that's going to burn his tires down through. Maybe that'll give him a little extra room to get through without hurting somebody. Like you used to? <clears throat> no. Denny, go ahead. Right now, for one of two of our trucks, it's an eight foot minimum for us to get up here. And that's without pushing somebody off the road or pushing them back up the road. I mean, our biggest challenge, and it'll never change, is still turn on the belt. You know, that is a narrow, dear road. When we go so fast. But I've been dealing with Todd since I got back in this position. And I've seen a lot of development plans. And the people that have submitted the plans, I'll talk with Todd. And if I want something changed for fire reasons or a lift or a parking spot, we haven't had any issues. You know, with the small development that have come here. You know, I don't. You look at Elmore Street, you know, off of me. I mean, from that first, they put the lines back. You have to go, you know, 25, 30 up to there. Because somebody coming down, if they don't know their vehicle, they're not going to hit that telephone pole right next to the road. So they're going to push you over so you can take the $600 mirror off the side of your truck because you hit somebody else's mirror and it's fired on the outside of the lake. But that's just the same thing that with the, the way the parking is, that slow the speed on that road. So just remember when you're talking roads or private roads, our trucks are 18. Anything narrower, I know your insurance company. We can't get to it. Any anybody else to comment? 
I was just wondering about the, um, so we're talking about new developments, not current roads. Correct. Correct. Okay. I, I, I agree with whomever brought up the topic. Um, the the um, Etienne set us, sent us the information about people speeding on wider roads. And if there's some kind of compromise that could be um, established, that would be nice between um, like ma the maintenance and, and uh, the planning commission. Was there any anything proposed? You, you've given us for proposals just to discuss it. Well, um, if you're asking me, we were trying to work that out originally last fall, um, but we got reached in um, getting information from you know, you know, which truck do you use where in town? And so um, we basically just needed to send a letter and said, wait. So, Bob, I don't know. Uh, you know, at this point, uh, my preference would be to try to apply some, some more top down management to planning. Uh, for example, you know, there are probably three or four different types of development that we might want to look at and say which road width is appropriate there based on the big development, where it is, commercial area, or um, something smaller, proximity to the village. And that would all be really interesting um, for an engineer to sit there and pour over. Um, and if you are, if the slicker is interested in going that route, I'm um, curious if you might be interested. I think that would be a very positive step. Then, then um, I'm going to call it a single road. Which I, I just have to say again, the single road with. Our policy and road width is only for development that want us to take over maintenance of the road after the development is in. X amount of houses are there to meet the criteria. A thousand feet of road, five houses. Uh, if they want us to take that over for maintenance, then we have a road width requirement which allows our dump trucks to plow. We have a pickup truck. Our pickup truck, their primary function in the winter time is a clear intersection. That saves our dump trucks time to back up. Go forward, back up, go forward, driving blindly at an intersection, drive to steer. The pickup trucks do that there in court. There, we don't have pickup trucks that pile driveway, uh, a little wider than driveway width, uh, roads. I mean, that's the spot we're there for. And we would have to increase our fleet size for that. I, I agree that every development comes with its own nuances because there's no such thing as a flat line. So you're working around terrain features as well as housing design and lot, lot lines. So, uh, I think there's the ability to to find from the developer what's their intent, what's your intent? Do you want the town to take this over? Because if you do this is this is what the requirements are, can we make it fit into your development plan? Not, we're not saying that it's, it's a one it's not a stamp for one size fits all. It is a size for us to maintain. We have to we have to be able to move our dump truck down to. <laughs> Yeah, thousand feet of roadway is a lot of roadway. If you want to clear a thousand feet of roadway, it's a lot of time. It, it's you can build it's not there there. But our dump trucks clear that much of that. Well, one of the other concepts here was that we, this is some years back uh, when we did change the policy of taking over dead end roads to, uh, I think you couldn't have more, you had to have at least five houses on the road to put up for the town to take over. Yeah, used to be 800 feet instead of a thousand. And so that was, I mean, part of the intent of that was to limit the less impactful development occurring far away from the village, which would then get turned over to the, to the town to maintain and plow. Because I think an interesting economic case could be made that that's just not worth, it's not worth it for the town to have to do that based on the tax revenue. So that's another way to look at policies such as this. Um, anyway, we, we that was one way that we did go with it uh, some years back, and now that's that's off the lead. But uh, it, it's worth reconsidering in some cases. 
Yeah, it reminds me of um, Ward Road. You know, Ward Road's right in the village, but it's got five, six houses on it, and it's geographically it lends itself to it's not that difficult to take care of. That road could be narrower because the way it's set up, you know, you don't have to have super wide, wide road beds as a place to turn around. Um, you know, that's a good example. Some of the other ones we looked at, the Belanger Lane and the Meadow Lane, that wasn't wasn't ready, but um, some of those roads, you know, it's not a uh, rubber stamp like Eric says. It's a lot to consider on each road. The road that's going to be um, up past North Country Federal, you know, the, the show van development, you know, that's going to be more traffic there. You're going to want to want to walk wider road. You're going to have sidewalks there probably eventually. A lot of little pe people are going to cut through there instead of coming down to the corner by the uh, drugstore. And uh, but it depends a lot on on how it's used and and how residential or commercial it is. But yeah, it's it's a good, definitely a, an important topic for us because I sympathize with the highway crew because we're you know what do we have 90 miles of paved road and 90 miles of dirt roads, 15 miles of sidewalks is like getting bigger and bigger and bigger all the time, you know. And um, we have to add trucks, we have to add people, and we have to you know it, it, there's a lot to it. So. Definitely, it's all good conversation. We have to just try and make good decisions, and, and hopefully, we can plan plan better when we put something new in. And that's that's what we're trying to do. Is there a weaver process in place now, where if somebody don't want to put in a road, it's going to meet all the criteria, but has a narrow spot or a couple spots that are a little more narrow and wouldn't allow for the forward to happen? Is there a process we can ask for a waiver and then allow the Got the board and a lot of developers here. Yeah. Yeah. The select board can do anything it wants, obviously, during the road acceptance process. But the developer, I mean, highly if you're designing a project, or a project, or Nick or Don or someone, they generally don't want to plow a road forever. So they're generally going to design it on town spec. So, I mean, Nick has a lot of projects. They're south, they're dead end roads, they're loop roads, they're thousand foot roads, they're in the village. But how is designing 24 feet of pavement? In case they want to get it taken over by the town. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a really question of the process to say, like, hey, this developer, do you want to just become a town road someday? You know, because it is over a thousand feet, uh, serving, you know, over five houses. If the answer is yes, then immediately, immediately about the back is 24 feet. Immediately, that does a few things. I mean, it just decreases that much impervious area and often takes it into stormwater management uh, under the state protocol. It also just takes up that much more room. You've got bigger curves, you've got way more land taken up, so it's like that much less land for actual development area. So there's definitely some negative repercussions from a uh, developer standpoint. You know? So it's definitely affecting people's decisions to do development and how to, and how to develop it uh, if, they, if that's what they want. Also, the alternative is that they don't turn over to town, but then that's something that gets put on the HOA forever. And that becomes a, uh, a negative marketing aspect to being able to sell those lots and sell those houses. And the cost of the developer, too, it's much more expensive to do that road, and then the developer is passing the cost on the homeowner is more that much less affordable at the town. I mean, my, my simple solution was dead end roads have a smaller angle. But that would be one way to do it. I mean, the FDM proposal is a little more stratified in terms of location of the village, but. I mean, most like a mixed development where I'm talking with Tyler, like they don't need the 24 foot wide roads for safety reasons. They might for plowing purposes. But I mean, I understand there's many balls to juggle there. Yeah. I mean, maybe there's something there that we can look at too as far as, you know, what, what the required shoulder area is or a stabilized shoulder for those for those those purposes. If there's, you know, not things impeding along the roadway. Yeah. So you have a smaller little active lane width, but, you know, still maintain a certain. You know, clear area as well as the potential. 20 feet of pavement and two foot shoulders or grass shoulders and level on each side. And then these guys aren't spending all the line. And you know, by the same token, the other end too is just like everybody says, well, we want our kids to be able to play where they're going. We want to be able to walk. And if you have that narrow of a lane, then people don't feel safe walking along those roads. I mean, I got a phone call a couple weeks ago and you see both kind of. People want to walk on safety coach, and that's 24 foot of asphalt. And you know, so there is the other side of it in the future uh, where the phone calls come in to me hey, you know, this road's not wide enough for me to walk on. Are you going to put a sidewalk in? Are you going to make this wider? Um, and then I got one last week, the same thing. 
woman wants to be able to push her stroller down the side of the road. It's too narrow and you're going to wipe it out. It's already 2014. There, there's a, a slide to that, you know, once that gets turned over to the town, that somebody else doesn't have to deal with. Because we're only getting told on our end, we, some of these roads are wide enough. I can't walk the road. Personally, you know, I mean, I love people want their kids to play out in the roads. You know, I, there's, that's not only the safest place for kids to play. <laughs> You know, I, I can't sit here and actually say, you know, a quiet subdivision, maybe, but, you know, you're on a thousand foot road, your kids are playing out in the road, there's traffic on the roads. It may not be the safest place. I, you know, I, I, I always have heard that. It's kind of one of the things that, I, you know, bug me on some of these roads where we want our kids to play in the road. Yeah, you might be able to ride bicycles, but playing sports isn't always the, the best thing to do out on the road. We've seen that even within the village where it's not always the case. Mm -hmm. So, do we want to do anything on this tonight? Just for discussion. Yeah, I just want to throw out uh, Randolph Road. Randolph Road, I travel all the time. And that's a narrow road in most places. And if the two pickup trucks trying to meet each other in a fight there, you got to wait. You got to wait for somebody to pass because it's uh, super dangerous. And um, that has no shoulders at all. And it's probably not going to anytime soon. You know, it's like, just the way it is. But bikers like to use that road because it's a pretty place to ride bikes. So. Yeah, Bob, I got to say, I think it's just an inappropriate comparison. I mean, what they're putting in to this road, that will not be through traffic at all. It just doesn't need to be that wide. And correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to be serviced by a sidewalk. Well. Talking about the trail. I was just talking about all roads. All well, roads. I, know, but I just want to make sure that we're making comparisons that are appropriate. That, that is exactly the place where you're going to have kids going through the street. Just as Maple Street, because I said in the stop sign, is if you walk that daily like I do with my dog, you see a pack of kids playing right there, which they can now do because of that stop sign. So I just want us to be a little bit more careful about saying that we must design roads for trucks, big trucks, because they're always going to get bigger. But our kids are not going to get bigger. Our kids will play in the street if they can. A lot of people, all the people just up here about the Fairwood Parkway said the same thing. They want that in certain neighborhoods. Let's just make appropriate comparisons going forward. Well, I can compare Maple Street too. Maple Street is is also dangerous to me because a lot of times there's cars parked on both sides of the street and you can't meet a car there. So, and that's a, not a place where kids should be playing. I'm sorry. Well, I disagree. Uh, you're absolutely able to disagree. But so you're saying you think kids should fail to play the street? I do. I don't think they should. Ask the chief sitting behind you, what do you think? Or the, or the rescue chief behind you. Okay. If not, if somebody's been on rescue for 35 years, I've seen a lot of bad accidents where you would not want your kids playing in the street at any time. I got hit by a dump truck when I was five years old because I was in the street. So we have different opinions. Go ahead, Mike. So, on the flip side of that, I have witnessed a child get hit by a guy who played his child's car. It had nothing to do with speed or anything. Get you in the Sorry. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. I, I think we should slow them down because, in case they get on the road, because they do act on it. But I sure would put my kids out to play in the road. I lived on Elmore Street, that'd be kind of dangerous. Myself. I think Gary would be able to help with this if you guys look at the policy because Gary literally voted for every new road in town over the last three plus decades. <laughs> and most of those roads, like we're saying, we're not talking about Randolph Road or Maple Street or any of the Elmore Street. We're talking about uh, 95, 98% of the new roads that we put in there. And we're talking about not the rural section of the town, we're talking about the paved roads largely in the village in the north end of town. That's only part of the length of the discussion we're having. We're not talking about the jigs or Oak Ridge Estates or Meadow Drive or anything like that. We're talking about the paved roads only. But Gary can for that. He's got the institutional member. But the, what the planning council has to do is they're writing this letter because they've got to tie their zoning, well, they should tie their zoning, in my opinion, to the road policy. And they're struggling doing that with urban roads and 12 foot wide lanes. And they didn't do the zoning in this update because they wanted the discussion first. So the zoning update to match your wider lane policy will have to wait for 20. 
Okay, I think we've beaten this horse down enough tonight. <laughs> Let's move to discuss old street signs. I agree. Yeah. If not, we're going to be here till 11 o'clock tonight. Uh, right. So my you have a two and a half minutes of my time. The uh, street where I was here, that's all the long street signs are about this long. Elmore Street, this map, that you know, they will in the packing for that book to drive and I look all over the place. I just, I was fired over the years working for the town that I was right. When we talk about the signs, they said they were going to get rid of them. I was going to have to set forth the left path, have those three signs to off and off at some point. Or, you know, maybe the mural in town or one of the projects that, you know, directly put towards a project. But Matt is no space to take that, so it would go towards the project in town. There's about 25, 30, 35. I mean, honestly, they were going to put in the Some will be more popular than others, I'm sure. So, you'd like to say that it's a little bit more. He's not going to have that one more popular, but people not What do you think? Yeah, Judy? Yeah, I'm a for it. Thank you. You need a motion? As long as it's concurrence on it, you guys have. Yeah, we just didn't want you guys there seeing signs for sale. Right. That. East High Street. Yeah. yeah. I'm all for it. Good. I'm next to the Green Act Fire Ocean for the July. I am supposedly having them on Saturday, December 5th. We will not be able to have that sort of white that we've held in the past, but we would like to have some kind of either Carol thing or thinking that. Fireworks in the winter just would be really fun to park. You can get all over our community and see it. And I need a motion for that. Trish, this is on uh, first the first night, or what is it called? Festival of Lights. What's it called, Judy? What did you say? Is this on the Festival of, of Lights night? Yes, it is. Yeah. I'll make the motion we approve it. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I thank you, Mayor Jewell. I vote fire, believe me. I paid Uncle Ray and Rose with this year. I had a block, you're off, but they're on private shows. I'm going to tell you that we just started our 2000 school this week. If we're going to go on science, science safety, there's all already predicting a surge this fall. I think for us to approve this far out would be way premature. I think we need to watch and see what the inspection rates turn into. And then talk about this again most of the day. I think you all understand that I would not I know you would remotely yep. do this. If it would be up to the assumption that the governor still allows that I I have no problem waiting. I can say Dan, if you put him out this like for the Sunday night out a couple days call up here. I didn't want to be positive. I said I was still here. Uh -huh. I have to say. You planned to see all our fireworks, and I gave my first alarm. We can have that motion be tentative, Blake. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Motion for this? Yes, please. Yeah, we see it there. You got it, Eric? What? Motion. So well, there's something in here? Yeah. You told me what to say again. Yeah? I saw it. I saw it. Those are motions. No, here you go. This is the one you're looking for. Oh, yeah. They down that far. Right. Okay. I think it worked for Tina. Uh, I move to offer Beamer's Group C plan to all employees that don't qualify for Beamer's Group D. This will take effect on July 1st, 2021. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? That was these and David, not these. You'll understand. Group D is for emergency service. All in favor say aye. 
Uh, Aye. Aye. Motion is passed. Next, approved fuel and propane bid. We got the propane first here. So I can do them separately. We're currently using borns for propane, isn't that correct? Yeah. Any issues? Somebody want to make a motion? I move to accept the one. Second. For, for propane or? For propane. For propane. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Aye. <laughs> so oil. I move to accept Brussels. Second. I have a motion and a second. At a dollar forty-eight a gallon. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, approve changes to FY 2021 compensation plan. And a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, add volunteer to EMS roster. Bill. How are you? I'm fine. You've been no. quiet all night. <laughs> I 
snow plow, not the hand one. Yeah, we'll schedule them wise, maybe you're going to switch out the bill. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, winners, you know, and, and, and all of our highway employees understand that. Right. You know, when they work, you know, if we call them in the winter, that's where you go. Uh, right. He's out there to plow. We get them sometimes in the in summer or spring, we have storms that go through. He's subject to free call by the county. Okay. Do I hear a motion regarding this? I make a motion that we add Pete Correct Clause to the um, uh, as a new addition to the uh, EMTs, the rescue squad. And does the caveat that he cannot volunteer while he's working does that need to be added into the motion? Um, I don't think that needs to be added. In the yeah, we don't have to add that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion is passed. Thanks, Bill. Next, 2020 delinquent current tax collection. So I just wanted to have a conversation um, uh, now that taxes have become due after the 90 day grace period and are now delinquent to see if there was any feeling that you wanted to change our current policy, which is um, once it becomes delinquent, you send the first notice right away that says, oops, you forgot. And then we send the second one, oh, did you get that letter that was, you forgot a month later? And then the third, so three months out, then we send a certified letter saying, if you don't pay up, then we're turning everything over for tax bill for collection. And I just wanted to see. What are your feelings on it? No, no. It's, um, so I ran some numbers. Um, where we're at right now with the total tax due um, after the first letter went out, we are hundreds, about 160,000 in delinquent. I didn't give you, I just got to run the um, figure tonight of where we were um, after the first letter went out last year. So in the not moving here, you don't have the figure. We were at 271,000. So we were at a lot more delinquent at this point last year than we are now. Um, so that's the first part of the conversation, trying to figure out if you want any changes with the delinquent tax um, policy. And then the other question that I have um, is that, I'm getting ready in a couple of weeks to process the next tax bill, which the first deadline will be November 16th because of the weekend falling. And you as a board, and that was set by the voters right before COVID hit, um, you as a board still have until um, January 1st to make any changes to that deadline if you would like to. If you would like to make that, I would prefer to to make the change before we send the bills out to simplify things for people. Um, as far I, I know I haven't answered your question, Bob, on the delinquent taxes. I'm not really sure how I see them about that one. Um, as far as the current tax bill, I really would not recommend changing that deadline um, because A, if, um, that doesn't come with delinquency, that just comes with interest, which is only 1%, which yes, it's 1%, but it, um, it becomes a cash flow problem. If we push out that November deadline, we're not going to have the money to pay the, the school, um, which is a big portion of it. And most of our loans are all due. Um, we, we borrow based on collecting taxes on that deadline. So um, I, I would not recommend switching that. November one out. I'm not sure about um, the delinquent taxes. You've given them a 90 day grace period. I, okay. I don't know if you need more or not. What are you going to say? Sorry, you gave us a figure of 200 million. Yes, not on those reports. Okay. So what's the $87,000 figure? Is that coming through my So, um, I, on that debt, on the, so, September 3rd of 19, that's where we were at. But then I realized tonight that that 
really doesn't mean much because on September 3rd, they are already gotten all three letters. Right. And so we were at a very no great um, That So September 3rd, we were getting ready to turn everything over to the attorney. Right. Versus now, that only sent the, the first letter. Because we gave them extra time. So it's not really a good comparison, right? No. It really is to be the 271 that I. Yeah. Is, is giving that extension the hardship within the townhouse is to create a pile more work, or is it just. Oh, slightly. Um, the, I, I wish that it looked at a calendar when you said it. Um, in my mind, I have been thinking of a grace period, maybe not so long. So it fell the same week that the primary is in it. And so this is. Dynamics were not a great piece of that. But um, besides that, no um, money has sort of trickled in. I think by the time the governor signed the legislation, most people had paid their taxes. So um, they didn't know they had extra time. No, and people, they were kind of, some people were annoyed, like, you know, why, right. why now? Why they rush? I figured out how to scramble and get the money. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's. They would have liked it like a month, month earlier before when they were panicking. But, but there was nothing we could have done. Yeah. We did what we could when we could. But money sort of trickled in over the three months. It wasn't like a mass rush. What do you guys think? Leave it as it is? I wouldn't say leave it as it is. You Brian? Yeah. Do we already know the new ideas? Are we considering extension for the November for the second spot? I don't think so. I, I wouldn't. No. I wouldn't vote for that. I think if we did that, we, we would have to borrow somehow to make up the shortfall or a short term. And then we did, we have to end up borrowing the money. Yeah. Um, but you look at you know, last year, we were getting the fiscal year. We're getting the fiscal year. And if we start pushing that one back, we're going to have cash flow problems. I think we need to think in there. We're going to have trouble paying the bills without going out far away from them. Yeah. And at the end of the year, it was a little bit different. So with the requirement to pay to school, no matter what, you know, we can't change that. And the state's not going to change that because they obviously want money to go to school. We're, we're going to end up borrowing money to pay money that we borrow. Yeah, that's not a good deal. We're going to pay interest on paying interest. Right. Judy, what do you think? Uh, I'm, 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 um, I'm for whatever the group is doing. It's really hard sometimes to follow all the conversation. I think we're in in agreement to keep it the same. And as far as how the delinquent taxes work, I just if we're going to keep the same scenario, I'm going to send out the more letters and then I'm going to come back to you to the whole list of um, taxpayers at that point and ask permission to uh, hire an attorney. So it'll come before you again. I just want to know if I don't send those letters or give them longer. I just need some guidance. Yeah, I think, yeah, just let us know. Come back. I think we'll keep it the same. All right. Next, dissolving municipal tips district for Trombley Hill. Um, back in 2014, the town was actually being a finance district on Trombley Hill. At that time, I gave you the, a map of what was supposed to be done up there, and then a lot of the tips were actually paid for stormwater. And then this is currently going up there. You see, these two lots here featured air ends, so there's no um, water is aseptic, there's really no storm water to be considered. And then this one lot of part of the, the middle lot there was all turned into this two solar farm. So those lots and, and what we were planning at that time never happened, nor will it ever happen. Meantime, we've been taking that increment from the taxes. Once again, it just covers the portion of improvement. It's not a special tax district. It's just a portion of it. And right now, there's no plan to build any infrastructure up here right. as a result of what's going on, nor is there a need right. to build any. And the one thing that I heard about that I just heard about is the 
opportunity maybe to build a sewer line or a sewer line up, um, et cetera. Well, the problem is that you can't collect an increment of taxes from these people to pay for something that doesn't serve them. Right. So you can't use the fifth district to do that anyway. It's not going to help them either. It's not going to help any. And the other thing is, if something does happen, and that does, the water and light department does want to end up, and the town wants to work with them. This, this is a municipal expense district. You can recreate it at any time. Right. But the tenth district, as it stands right now, serves no purpose anymore. Um, the money should go to the general fund. There's, there's not something that we can plan that's going to service all of these lots anymore because of the things. Just right. the changes that happen. And that's what, like 74,000? You said? No, we've got 20,000. A little over 20,000. Oh, okay. Um, it's been going into the infrastructure fund because it was supposed to be set aside for this. Once again, it's a municipal tip that comes to the web that the, the, the tip district or you know, the as in plan doesn't exist anymore. So there's no reason to keep it. We can't even spend the money. It has to be once again something that benefits the whole district, and there's nothing that can be done to do that. Um, and once again, if you, you run into something later on that will benefit, you can recreate it. So right now, there's not even any infrastructure improvements in the works. So we're, we're recommending that you resolve it. Okay, you just need a motion to do it? Yeah. Oh, what do I get? I move to dissolve the municipal tip district for Trombley Hill Innovation and Industrial Park. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any aye. opposed? Motion is passed. Next, old business. Approved change order for Mud City Luke Culvert. This is another change order. This was for um, taking out some wedge before they set the culvert back in there. Um, and um, $5,637.70. It didn't last. Oh, it saved us some money from not lasting. Uh, they just can't rent it out. So. Okay. So I hear a motion regarding that. I move to accept. Second. I have a motion and a second. So I want to ask. A I want to ask a question. Didn't we approve? Was this the same group we approved more money two weeks ago? Yeah, we did. Two weeks ago, duty was for the uh, cold concrete abutments that they found when they. Uh, dug out when they excavated the road. Right. We oh. had to remove those. That was a three thousand dollar amount. Okay. This, this was actually ledge that they ran in beyond that, and they had to, to destroy it to hammer out the ledge in order to set the box folder in place. But it, it took a more time, and it was unexpected. Yeah. Same company, just different uh, different change order. Thanks for explaining it. I, I point out too that the two change orders, the road is almost done at the top. But I went up last week and last week. But the two change orders they've had, I think, mean, were very fortunate that they didn't find any catastrophes underneath that old road. So yeah. uh, the, the two change orders totaled uh, less than $9,000, which, if you add that to their bid, initial bid, oh is still well below the you know, competitors. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, first is done uh, a great job. Uh, yeah, I've been up two times and they have everyone did a great job. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion's passed. Liquor control, Sarah? No? Okay, good. Approve the warrant. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So passed. TA report. Um, just a reminder, September 15th, 5 p.m. road acceptance hearing for full Meadows. Um, so I need at least a quorum to be there. I think Karen could contact a long time ago when we warned us. Um, so what, any three of you there? Yeah. To do the hearing. Can you text us? Can you text me, Sarah or Erica? <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. And me too. I will not. I will not be there. Okay. It's five. It's five o'clock. Yeah. That's great, thank you. Go ahead. Um, on the single cover, it, it's really for all. There's they have the car we have to do. Um, so I was talking about one meeting. It, it, it's open, so it's back open traffic. They still have the car we have to get the one that inspected it. How it's going to go up and inspect it. Uh, car I think we said it's being done. It's 12. So that'll be done. 
oxygen. Um, it'll be all back to normal. Um, they did do a great job um, cleaning the entrance pinch and it opened back up. I left the schools now and I left the post office now. So we we'll opened back up the, the traffic up there. Um, optical bathrooms, both Patricia and Kevin have talked to the Sunny Blake. It's still on the schedule for this year. Hopefully, we'll be starting that soon. So, I heard about it today. Um, we'll, we'll start prepping the tech part of the next one. We'll still get it constructed. It won't be available for use, but we're going to get it done this year. Um, paving, while you're here, Kevin, I don't know if you heard anything more back from the paving company. There's still no one has heard anything back from you. Um, I know they had an accident, a very unfortunate accident with their foreman. And yeah, um, that's a great idea. No of the truck back to the rental on the salary. So I'll be done that right now. I'm trying to contact you. Is that Norm? Norm. Norm. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, they're going through a whole lot right now. Hutchins has really done great work for us. But they've, they've got a lot of things that they're dealing with right now. From everything we know, they haven't forgotten about not unusual. We've got plenty of time to do stuff. So, um, so there's still that going on. Um, do you have any to uh, stormwater project? I don't know if you guys remember, you approved one a stormwater project up where the Bell Park is going um, a while ago. That will be starting probably. Next week, just so to drive by and what the hell's going on, kind of thing. So they're, they're getting ready to do that. There. So we um, have a pre, uh, pre construction conference for Shire on that one well, Thursday. So they'll be starting that off. Gravel is doing that. That's where? Remember the, the little in between Copley and Park Street? The little triangle land there? Oh, yes. Yeah. Pick up the water coming down off the cost of the hill from the school. And then some water tension that's going in there. So they'll be starting that. Underneath the dog park, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this dog park will still have plenty of time to get that done this year, so Chris has been all over that and getting that ready to go. So we'll be able to cut that front part. We got a new dog, we got a new dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's really what I have. I mean, there's a lot going on in my company, okay. Any questions for Dan? Thanks, Dan. Select board concerns, Gary. Uh, I had to think about it the other day, when, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, maybe longer ago than that, Chief Denny brought up, wondering why we had a crosswalk on the rail trail. I was going up through there the other day and a bicycle shot right straight across there, never even slowed down. And it, I'm wondering if it's in because there is a crosswalk there, because there's, there's stop signs on both sides of that. Mm -hmm. It's up to the people and the bicyclists and uh, snowmobilers and everybody else to stop there before they cross the road. But I'm wondering if that creates a liability on our part by having a crosswalk there, or is that anything that we we did? Because I agree with Danny that I, I'm not sure there should be one there. Because those people should be, re they're required to stop there, but having a crosswalk there gives them an indication that we're going to stop, or the traffic is going to stop, because you got a pedestrian sign right in the middle of the road there as well. Some traffic is going to stop for people in the crosswalk. But aren't you, aren't you supposed to stop the crosswalks any place in town before they run out in the middle of them? If they... See, that's what G's saying. Yeah. Yeah. But the trail crossing there, but there's there's a marking for yeah. crosswalk. Painted for crosswalk. Right. And all the other places. I would think it'd be a See, there's, there's no, like up 15A, there's no crosswalk marking up there. And we won't find it for the season, it's the higher. Right. But 
like I say, I'm just wondering if it if it entices people to just shoot right across there. Yeah, they they probably more the down by the the cross there by right there. No, there's no crosswalk there either. It's up to them. It's up to people using the trail to stop and correct. Yeah, I would think it'd be a better thing to have it because that's the thing I've always talked to you about in the spring is getting at crosswalks. Because sometimes when you're coming into town, if you don't happen to see that there, I know you got two signs or something saying crosswalk, but if you you know you happen to see that say, well, okay, I'm looking. <laughs> and uh but then again, maybe we want to check into it and make sure that we aren't. Yeah. It seems to me too a bicycle wants to protect our right. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, I mean that's yeah. And there's stop signs there, right? There is. There's stop signs on the rail trail. This guy named Darwin came out with a theory about folks who run out and on their bike. Yeah. They call it Mack Truck. So. <laughs> you'd be right, but you'd be dead right. But <laughs> it's hard to like, like, it's worth checking into a while to the town. Uh, I'm sure. I'm thinking it's good. Well, I don't know. I we did everything with best intention. However, we may have gone the wrong direction. Danny be smiling here to you right now. I'm like, uh, I'm never going to do that. Mike's going to tell him anyway. Yeah, just one of those flyers. We're not out there. It's not marked early here. Yeah, right. I'm calling you out. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure that we marked it to begin with. The trail of the paving contract when they repaved that. Money. No, we've always had a marking there. And those that mark over there. That's the thing yeah, I was going to say, I've gotten lots of calls. I just think the safer we can make it, there's always going to be lawbreakers no matter what. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm just wondering if it entices people right. seeing the market in the pavement. Right. Or if, if we're supposed to be doing it on the rail trail, you know. Right. Good yeah. to find out. Is that it? Do you have anything else? Uh, no, I was just wondering about the, the washout up on but the first money city loop road there is there was got some barrels there. Yeah. 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 Coleman needs to change. They say last week we should be after after this week here. We're getting that. But it's been there for quite some time. For most of the time. Yeah. Well, that was the only concerns I had. Okay. Judy. I'm, I'm here with my usual. The speeders on Randolph. Bob, I'm glad to hear that you slow down and when you see people like walkers or bikers, because a lot of people don't. They just drive like the hammers of hell. I just think it might be you, Judy, so I'm really scared. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. I'm cautious. Go ahead, Brian. Eric? I just want to briefly discuss a question I had from a fact here or weekend, we saw our, and I want to explain because we made another uh, the club with some lawyers right here. Uh, Saturday morning, our village crew with a couple of our guys out, uh, and they were painting crosswalk in the village. And they were going early in the morning. And they were asked by the taxpayers how come they were working on a Saturday because obviously it was overtime in the summer. And uh, the response they got was true, it was correct. It may not, may not have been complete, but it was true. That the, the weather has not been good enough for do the painting another time. And we've all enjoyed this beautiful weather. <laughs> However, <laughs> the difference between enjoying beautiful weather and having road conditions is um, good enough for paint to adhere to, it doesn't got moisture on it, it doesn't have high school traffic on it. So the reason our village crew was out there. And we've done this notoriously in the past on Saturday morning because they can get out there early before the traffic hits, get this stuff done before the truck traffic and everything else comes through, start rolling the paint into the next lane. Um, but we've got a hygiene content, a lot of fog, a lot of moisture in the air, and that has kept them from doing the painting in the early morning hours of the week. Um, Saturday turned out to be a great day. So uh, they made the decision to go ahead and do that. So I'll be contacting them just. Then, if they didn't speak today, I'll reach out to that pastor. I wonder what he understands. We found guys on Saturday. We're not milking overtime. We're not draining the budget. Uh, it was done purposely uh, and possibly. That's all right. Okay. All right. And I'm off to as well. Next, other business. 
Is there any other business anyone wants to bring up before we hearing none? Go ahead. Hold on your seat, there's five more. Motion. Enter I move to enter executive session to discuss evaluation of a public employee and the provisions of Title One, Section 313, 3A3 of the Rock Act. Thanks. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. I find the premature general public knowledge of pending or probable civil litigation to which the public body is or may be party will clearly place the town at a substantial disadvantage by exposing it. Motion is passed. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is passed. We enter executive session to discuss pending or probable civil litigation to which the public body is or may be party under the provisions of Title I, Section 313A1 of the Mass Statute. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is passed. I find the premature general public knowledge of real estate purchase and lease options. It further takes the town a substantial disadvantage by disposing of negotiation strategy. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is passed. And I move. So we enter executive session to discuss real estate purchase or lease options under the provision of the Title I, Section 313A1 of the Vermont Statute, since it's Dan Lindley. Also, under the other motions, we're including Sarah and Kevin still sitting here, so I'm like, no. Kevin's free to go back on the occasion. Okay. Yeah. Just Sarah. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion is passed. First off. Yeah. Good job, Eric. You're the right man for the job.